Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, there's a suggestion that I've been has, having an easy time of it over the last two or three days, and I don't know what I'm going to get get myself into here, but I've been given a URL to upload for a puzzle to solve today, and we're just going to see what happens. Um, so, not going to mention the apps or the Patreon, although actually everything Roggen is on fire. The solution video is now out today on Patreon. Well worth a look. So I'm not mentioning that. Um, what I am going to do is just put in the URL and hit play and see what we get. And let's get cracking. Um, Multicolored Insect by SF Steve. I don't know who SF Steve is. I don't know if he's from San Francisco or likes science fiction or what. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits read the same either way along gray palindromes. Okay, we can understand that. This must be the same as this, for instance, because of the palindrome. That must be the same as that. Um, cells joined by X sum to 10. I was doing that yesterday. And those joined by V sum to 5. But this time, not all Xs and Vs are shown. And digits in the cage total 17. And that's all we get. Um, is it an insect? Yeah, I sort of see a beetle, perhaps. Could have been a jellyfish, but lots of things look like that. Anyway, multicolored insect. So we may have coloring to do. In fact, yes. Let's get cracking anyway. Let's do try this on the link below the video. I don't know how hard it is, but maybe we've got a clue from the lack of rules and the lack of numbers in the grid and just one cage. Um, okay, let's get coloring something. Right, anything that is on a V is the numbers one to four, because you can only make up one and four or two and three as a V sum. Oh, it's all fully symmetrical with the Vs there. Okay, interesting. So those blue cells are all one to four. Now, if it joins with an X onto a blue cell, it must be the other color, which will make orange. If it joins with an X to an orange, it must be blue because the, the 10 sums always involve one number from 1 to 4 and one number from 6 to 9. So that's blue as well. Now, palindromes as well. So this is blue. Ah, that's on an X. So those two are orange. Um, oh, yeah, this is, this is getting stuff done, actually. OK, that's blue. Same again. X gives us orange there and on the other end of the palindrome. So, right, there are deductions we can make from this. The rest of the cells in box four here and box two are orange because there are four blues there already. Same for row four and column four. Box five, four blues already in it. Um, now, palindromes up here, that's blue, that's blue. That's blue. Reminder, oh, look, row five and column five, there's only one cell left to fill. So orange there, that goes with blue. This is also orange. This is the last cell in its row and box. It's orange because there are five oranges in each row, column and box. This is a domino of one orange and one blue down here. Only one cell up. Ah, row two's got four blues. So's column two, thanks to the impressive symmetry here. <clears throat> one blue to go in row. Oh, palindrome. Yes. Sorry, I hadn't noticed that. That's all the palindrome cells shaded apart from two middle ones, which don't actually help. They're not duplicated anywhere. So we've got a lot of the grid shaded between low and high colors as a result of that. But I don't, I mean, I suppose this 17 cage is going to have to figure out in the end what the numbers are. But now I am understanding 
that we are going to have to differentiate between the ones and fours and the twos and threes. One and four will always go together. So we could color that pair of cells one color and the other, the other low color. And then we can probably propagate that around the grid. And they will always go, one and four will always go with six and nine on an X. Whereas two and three will always go with seven and eight. And maybe we'll get left with something in this cell, in this cage, I mean, that will let us deduce what's going on. I can't see any other way of going about this. So it's pretty linear then. Um, right, let's go. Oh. Um, I don't want this multicolor mode on for this, I don't think. Right, so let's go with purple for, well, I don't know if it's one and four, for one set of the Vs. Right, this pair must be the other set because they're in a column with a purple. So I'll make them green. Uh, this is in a box with two green, so that's purple. That's on the palindrome with a purple. Um, yeah, that's clearly purple in the row with two green. That's green. This does work. We're getting the whole grid done like this, which is a relief. No. Um, these, no, hang on. Oh, they're on the palindrome. Oh, so they're all purple. Yes, okay. Oh, no, that I marked as purple, and it can't be. Sorry, that's green. It's in a... The two V's are purple. There we go. Let's fix that. This is green because it's in a row with two purples. That's green. So that's green and that's green. And those are purple. And that colors all of them. Oh, those are green. This is purple. Let's get them all done. Right. Oh, this might help us find another one or two of the ones and twos, but I don't see how actually. Okay, so let's carry on and start shading all these orange cells if we can. Trouble is some of the oranges are going to be fives. So I'm going to need three colors, one for one and nine, one for, sorry, one for six and nine, which go together with one and four. So, on the X's, purple will always go together with blue. Let's do that. So I can use blue again now. Um, so those are blue. Purple will always go together with blue. So that's blue. So I'm trying to color all the orange cells. In. That's blue as well. Uh, purple with an X becomes blue. Oh, this might not work as neatly then. Um, green with an X must become the other color. Let's make it red, because I'm running out of alternative colors. Green with an X becomes red. So they're both red. Ah, so the two reds are done there in column two. That's on the palindrome. Um, that palindrome's done. Ah, oh, two reds in column five as well now. And two greens in column five. Oh, well then I've got something wrong. Why have I... Let me just uncolor that last cell, which I made orange, because I thought I'd counted four blues. But I don't think I had. I think there's one small number there, one small number there. Oh, yeah, and two up here. Hang on, that's not a small number. That's a high number. The fact that it's blue now doesn't mean it's small anymore. Blue is being used for one set of the high numbers. Right, so small numbers are green, purple, and purple green oh that's small so all the smalls are gone two reds that's blue okay this 
is either blue, that high digit style, or five, and I don't know which. Okay, sorry, but I don't know why. Oh, I see, that's why it was orange, because it's either blue. I shouldn't be. I'm just confusing myself. Let's use the different. Oh, no, I can't use the light grey because that'll obscure the palindromes. Oh. Could use the multicolored thing. I don't really want to do that. Okay, let's carry on with this blue goes with purple business. Oh, yes, and red doesn't. Red, we've got two reds here. I know where any fives go. If I could find a cell, which, yeah, I need to do a bit more red and blue shading. Maybe I can do more. No negative constraint. Um, that or that. How do I? Ah, this sees two reds and two blues. Oh, they could be the same, though. Yeah, is there anything else that sees... I haven't got anywhere that sees two blues yet, so maybe I'm missing something. Right. Purple, yes, joins to this cell. So that's blue. Sorry, I missed that for a good long time. But now that that's blue... Ah, look at this central cell to the grid. It's seeing two blues in the row, two purples and greens and reds in the column. So it can't be any of those. It's a five. Let's make it white. It's on the palindrome with that one. That can be a five as well. Now, the other fives are all orange. This is not a five now, so it is red. Oh, this can't be a five, and that can't be a five. So the five in row six is here. Five, let's go back to white for that one. The five in row four has to be on an orange, a cell that is orange at the moment, and we're going to make it white and put a five in there. Right, and five in, oh no, it could be in any of those three in box three. That's not very helpful. Ah, but the five must be in the bottom row here because everything else is purple, green, red, or blue. And they are numbers from the other sets. So the five in row seven is here. The five in column two is in one of those. Okay, that feels like some progress. Now, what else can I do? I haven't got many sets of two blue. Oh, having said that, column nine, I've got two blue and two purple. This one can't be red, and it can't be five, so it must be green. Now I've got two green and two red in the row, so everything else is... Small, but that's not meant to be small. Oh. Oh, have I done something wrong? What have I done wrong here? That's seeing two reds. Surely these are both reds. They're touching greens. Sees so two blue and two purple and two red. So it can only be green or five, and five's there on the palindrome. Two green, two red, purple, one purple. So in the rest of the row, I have to place another purple and two blue. And this, therefore, is high and is blue. And that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And therefore, it's on the palindrome. That can be blue as well. Now we're getting quite a few blues around. Um... And we've still got one blue and one purple to place in that row. And I don't, yes, I do. There's two purples in column three. Good grief. I'm clearly going to have to color the whole grid as well as a few fives before I can disambiguate this whole thing. That's really clever. It's going to take a while, even from here, I have no doubt. 
Now there's one orange left here, so we can color it, it's red. There's one orange left in box five. Again, it's red because there are two greens already. Column six I'm looking at now. We've got one green to put in, which must be down here. Then we'll have two greens, two purples. Then we'll still have a five and a red. But annoyingly, the five could be in one of two positions. Red, green, purple. Ah, column eight. I can do the other two cells are both blue because I've got two red, two green, and two purple. Now I've got my two blues in box nine. Um, ah, purple can't go in. Yes, where does purple go? Those two cells are ruled out because there's two purple there. Those two purples rule out those cells. So this is purple. Oh, my. Goodness, this is so weird. Two blues in that row, two blues in that row. The other purple has to be here uh, in, in boxes seven, eight, nine. And that means this is blue. So basically, I'm working on the fact that I need two blues, two reds, two greens, two purples, and a five in every row and column now. That's how I'm working on this. Right, this one can't be red. So it must be blue. Um, and up here, we have a blue and a five. Interesting. Um, along row four, we have a red and a blue still to go in. Can't do those yet. All right, what about box nine again then? We've got two purple and two blue. We've done one green. We've got two reds to put in and a green in these three cells. I don't really know how they go. Maybe, I mean, I can't believe I can do any regular Sudoku until I can use the 17 cage to establish what number is what. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Orange is remaining the kind of uncertain color. It can be five, red, or green. Right. But something's wrong in this column. I need another blue. So I have got two reds, two greens, two purples. That's got to be blue and the five. So I did color it wrongly at one point. In the bottom row, two blues, two purples, red and green. So I need another red, another green, and a five. Hmm. Oh, can none of these, oh no, these top two, could, no, that can't be a five. In fact, it's on the palindrome, oh, it's purple, yeah, okay, two purples. I think part of the problem with the colouring is I sometimes leave the cursor in a cell which changes the colour, and I don't know what colours I've got. Anyway, two purples, two blues, one green, one red in column six. We need another green, a red, and a five. I just said that. Don't know where the five goes. We have one set of fives on palindromes, the others can't be in any reflected cells on the palindromes. Right, I need to find something else. Column three looks hopeless, although I've got the two purples. Ah, and that can't be green either, because there's two greens horizontally, two purples vertically. So I'm going to color it orange. It can't be five, so it is either red or blue. And if the colouring is right in row three, then the last purple goes here. Yes, there's two purples in column three, two in box two, and two in column seven. Yes, that is purple. Um, and that's done both purples and greens here. I'm going to make that orange. That means this is green. 
two greens, two purples, a red and a blue. So I still have a red and a blue to complete in those two cells. Got all my small digits there. Can I place the last green in box three? No, it's in one of those two cells. Can't do it. Sorry if it's obvious and I'm not seeing it. That is possible. Um, now I've got a red and a blue to go in row four. How are we going to finish this off? This two red, no, one red and two blues and a five to go in column four. It's not very helpful. Set. Um, wow, what, what on earth am I meant to be thinking about to get this coloring done? Or am I just on the wrong track somehow? This is high and not a five, but that could be. Okay, what what can these be? Maybe we have to keep these as low as possible. So these two cells have to be at least five and six. That's the absolute minimum. That's 11 already. And these two have to be one and two. So, 14, but there's still three degrees of freedom for that 17 cage total. So I don't think that's the way to go about it yet. I need to find a little bit more information about the colouring. Two blues, two purples, green. I just don't have many reds in the top and bottom of the grid, so they're not getting ruled out of places. Row. Eight. I've got two purples and two blues. I need another green and two reds. These can't both be green. Yes, this box needs a green and two reds. They can't both be green there, so one of them at least is red. And this ends up being either red or green. Decide which. Of course, it could be two reds here. Then you go green, red. I can't place the fives. If I could just rule five out of there, I would. Oh no, then I'd have a different X wing of fives. Greens and purples have been done here. One blue. Do I oh, do I actually need to discover which red is which, for instance? Oh, that's depressing. I hadn't even thought of that. Yes, you could have two different reds looking at a cell. Oh, my goodness. Okay, then I'm going to need to go back to the part colouring. Then we could maybe mix the reds with a grey. So... How am I going to do this and keep any track of what's going on at all? Let's try it here. That red, mix it with dark grey because it's one version of whatever the reds are. Now that has to be different from that version, so the same as that one. Um, it may not have been the colour to start with. Let's do it with something that works a bit easier. I don't know what to do. Uh, let's do it with greens. We'll call that green and grey, and that's ordinary green. So this one is green and grey. That one is ordinary, so that's green and grey. This one is ordinary, so that's green and grey. Um, that is ordinary, that's green and grey, that's on the palindrome, so that's green and grey. So that one is, yeah, that's interesting, we can place these all around the grid. 
so the last one in box nine is in one of those two and the last one in box three is in one of those two and that didn't really help at all but green and gray is always going to sit opposite the red and gray we shall say in the tens so that one is red and gray so whichever one of these is red is red and gray so that's not and that one is and it's also with a green and gray so that makes sense that one is because it's with a green and gray wow I just don't know that coloring is sufficient for all this um yeah that's interesting this cell cannot be red now because it sees a red and gray and an ordinary red therefore it can't be another red did i know that before i don't think i did it is high so it's either five or blue and it can't be blue so that is the five that's how to get there good grief i have not been clever with that okay but that means this is a five as well that's not okay well that feels like progress slightly should probably carrying on carry on doing the red and grays if they can although actually all of these three are ordinary reds they're all the same so's that yeah i think i've just about done it let's have a go with purple and gray as well let's start here make that one purple and gray so that becomes purple and gray that's on the palindrome so that one that makes that one um that one means that it's this in box seven that makes it that in box nine that in box eight and purple and gray oh i've still got one right that one meant it's this yes which joins to the blue i could have done that a simpler way and i think i've done all my purple and gray so then blue and gray is the other thing to do that one is blue and gray so that means it's this on the palindrome that means it's here in box five i don't know that it's that one though box four because i don't know where the other blue and gray is this is now blue and gray that's blue and gray that's blue and gray and now i do know because oh no i don't that doesn't that could be blue and gray so it doesn't mean that can't be oh this is so complicated now maybe i should have used placeholder numbers instead of colors i think i'm still getting there so so down here I need one red and one green ah and the green is the ordinary green and that cell says it can't be there so green goes there red goes there now in this row i need a red ordinary red um now here i still need a red gray and a green gray and i can't tell which way around they go um what about these colored cells this one for instance oh yeah these two have to be a red gray oh but including that we need a blue a blue gray and a red gray i can't see what to do there final column oh we've got all the ones purple blue green and red without the gray yeah they're all finished so we're going to need a green gray and a red gray in the last two and i can't see how to choose oh i really thought this was going to do it now um gray, purple, purple 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 no 
Let's have a look up column two. We've got both greens, both reds, both purples. Got a blue. Ah, and we need blue and grey, and it can't be here because of that. So it's up here, blue and grey. There we go. And it's not the five. It's not the five. The five is here. Let's take the colour out of that cell, put a proper five in. That gives us a five here. So this is a definite blue or red now. Can't be blue. It's red of some description. I don't know if it's, oops, it's on there. Let's just get rid of the blue colouring. Right, it's red in some way, but I don't know if it's red, grey, or ordinary red. It should be useful to know. But now I've got a five. I'm still going to need to know what colour that is. It's not red, it's not blue, grey. It's not green, grey. Oh, I know it's, it's got to be red or blue, doesn't it? Now, all of these have to be red or blue. And that. So I need a blue and two reds up here. This one can't be blue, so it's red of some description. And this one sees both ordinary blue and blue gray, so that is also red of some description. And I don't know which way round they are because I haven't done all the red greys, but they're both red, so this one has to be blue, and I think it has to be blue gray. Yes, so that's ordinary blue. This is now red gray. There we go. This is so complicated in my head. Much better at juggling numbers than colours. Now, this is plain blue. It must be. Haven't sorted out those, and maybe that's not going to matter for coming up with the numbers, which would be weird. Um, Silver so there and there. Well, blue gray must be here. That is therefore red gray. Yes. That means that's red gray. That means this is green gray. And that means this is green gray. Now, that is ordinary red, so this is red gray. And I might have got the whole grid, and I've got these two orange cells up here. Um, let's take the color out of those and work out what they are. This one is red gray. Yes, I need that. And this is ordinary blue. And there we go. Right, now can I do the numbers, please? Is this, if this step's hard, it's going to hurt. Right, this is one of the Vs, as is that, one of the small numbers. This is one of the bigger numbers. But, right, if they're gray, they're from one set. But if they're blue, they're from the other set. So if this was one and two, this couldn't be nine and eight. It would be seven or six. Five, seven, eight. And that doesn't work. That only makes 15 or 14. So if that's one and three, which gets us eight. This can't be nine because it would have to go with one of the greys. Wow, this is weird. If this is one and four, that can be seven. So if it's two and three, that can't be seven because that would need to have a grey to be with three. If that was two and four, that couldn't be six because that would also need to be with the grey. And if that was three and four, the last possibility, this would be another five. So that doesn't work. So these are one and four, and that's a seven. My good grief. Right. Well, blue being seven, that is the one I can actually use. So let's do that. Blue is seven. I believe this is right. I haven't got a blue in this central box. Oh, yes, I have. I've 
seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine sevens. Right, so then blue-gray, which always abuts a seven on an X, although actually there's no instance of that, is a three. Okay, so the blue-gray is a three. Oh no, that's not good. No, 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 I'm thinking the wrong way. But what does blue about? It abuts purple. So purple, ordinary purple is three, sorry. And yeah, I think that's okay because I want one and four on the shadings, yes. <sighs> Misunderstood my own logic for a second. Right, three there on the purple. Then that goes on the V with purple gray, which must be two. Must be two. And that uses the X to go with blue gray, which must be eight. What a crazy puzzle. Eight. Nine of them. Oh, but this is not what I wanted, is it? No, it's not. I've got these numbers wrong, I thought. Seven goes with three. I can't believe that. I cannot believe that I have misunderstood how to use this. So, oh, something's gone wrong here because that palindrome is not working. Green gray should be connected to red gray. Right, I can fix that. Oh, goodness. Talk about having a bit of a noddy nightmare here. Then I think that does make palindromes work. And it hasn't really changed what I was thinking about annoying you, but it does make those palindromes work. So what have I done wrong here? Why is purple grey? One of those is from one four and one is from two three. That must be right. And this one of twelve. Oh yeah, that seven can't be right. I'm just deleting the numbers there, and we'll try again with the numbers now. How does this work? So, seven there in the ordinary blue, but I've put three in the purple, two in purple gray. I mean, this is what I was doing, and it clearly didn't work. And that didn't go with three in the green. Purple does not go with green. Yes, they can't have been from the same. They can't add up to five, those two, because they're from different sets. So that could never be seven. That was incredibly dumb. Right. So five and six there would allow a two and a four. Five and eight would allow a three and a one. Now, one of these is right and one of them is wrong. I have a nine. I have a two and a one. I actually I think they could all be right. Only the seven that I did can be wrong. So that wasn't smart. Right, let's try again then. If this was a six in the blue, that would mean ordinary purple was a four. That means purple grey is a one. That adds up to 12. This would have to be 
five again. That's clearly not happening. So let's try it. It's an eight or nine in the blue. If it's an eight, this purple is two. That means purple gray is three. Then we get a one in the green gray. And I think that could work. What happens if blue is nine? Then it's one in the purple, four in the purple gray. Then we'd have five, four, nine. That's too much. That's 18. I now believe that blue is eight. I think this is right this time. Right. That means purple is two because of the X. Ordinary purple is two. That means because of the V that purple gray is three. This is better. This looks, well, it feels better. Um, now, because of the cage, 5, 8, 16, gray green is 1. About that. Because of the X, red gray is 9. Um, because of the V, ordinary green is four. Because of the X, ordinary red is six. I clearly missed one cell in the top corner, at least. Two blue gray. I haven't done any blue grays. They must be sevens, that horrible number that tried to trip me up when I started filling in numbers. Seven. And I reckon this grid works. Let's hit the check button. Looks good to me. I mean, it looks like all the V's and X's work to me. Just scanning them. The check button has told me that the Sudoku aspect works. I mean, I really could get rid of all of the uh, coloring, but on the other hand, that's what got me here. So I might just leave it behind. What a monster of a puzzle. I really made heavy weather of that. I don't think it was quite as hard as I was finding it, but every stage of the colouring was another revelation for me. The fact that you didn't just need low numbers, you needed to know which pair of low numbers you needed. Then you needed to know which of the pair of low numbers, and the same applied to all the high numbers. And I eventually had to come up with this way of creating eight colors and indeed find where all the fives were and take them out of what I had as orange originally. Oh, I'm sorry if uh, I threw you with any of that because it was a little poorly articulated, unlike this insect, which is, of course, beautifully articulated. Thank you very much to SF Steve. I believe it was his second ever puzzle. Please don't get harder as you uh, do more, Steve, because that could throw me off my game completely. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Do have a look at Dimono's video and uh, see you soon on the channel. Bye for now.